What's up guys, Dark Dally here, playing Ghost Recon Wildlands, and today I want to do a more proper and concise introduction to what exactly Ghost Mode is in Ghost Recon Wildlands. Now this is the second video in the series, and the first video, which was a little bit long, I went through and kind of went over a bit of everything you can expect to see in this series. Here I want to do a point by point introduction of the top things that you should know about Ghost Mode before starting it. Maybe there's probably some things here you may not know. I spent a lot of time testing and exploring and figuring things out. All right guys, so here we go. First of all, Ghost Mode is, well, it's a new mode introduced in Update 15. And honestly, it uses a lot of the immersion ideas that we, the Ghost Recon community came up with. I can't help but think that Ubisoft was actually kind of listening to us. Not that that's unthinkable, but it does seem that they have. They've taken a lot of our immersion ideas and put it in here. And we're going to go over all these things point by point. All right, so probably the first thing you should know is this. When you start Ghost Mode, you're going to be presented with this screen where you have three empty slots, just like when you started Fallen Ghost. you got three empty slots. you got to make a whole new character to do Ghost Mode. And um, you may, hopefully not, but you may have to revisit the screen a few times because when you die, death is permanent. Now we'll talk about the permadeath um, thing here in a minute. Let's get to some more points. It is meant to be an immersive mode. And I think that they've done a pretty good job. Like for instance, only one weapon. Notice I have no other weapon on my back. If I put my AK away, oh, that's all I've got. Now I've used a lot of weapons and we'll have a future video in this series on loadout ideas and how to pick your loadout. I went through many weapons, and uh, if you guys are wondering, this is what I'm using right here. I'm using a pretty chopped down AK-12. One other thing they've done, and this is something that we directly, uh, many of us agreed in our Immersion Ideas videos, is that you can only change your loadout at loadout boxes, at ammo boxes, I should say. For instance, let's run up here. There's an ammo box right up here. If I pull up my screen right now and go to loadout, notice I don't even have the list on the side. And if I push, you know, select on my rifle, only ammo boxes, weapon cases, and accessory cases allow you to modify your weapons. That's right. So they've done one really cool thing we suggested. So you need to be careful and plan ahead for your mission. You can change weapons mid-mission, sure. So long as there's, a, you know, an ammo box, a weapon case, or an accessory case, you can come here. And now this little triangle button um, on the HUD actually serves a purpose. Because before, you could just change your loadout anywhere, even mid-battle. So that's another thing. So that's two very immersive things right there. There's, there's f several immersive things already right there. You can also choose to play without your squad. However, that's an overall new change with update 15. You can choose to play without your squad in regular gameplay mode as well by simply going to the options menu right here, gameplay, scroll all the way to the bottom and you can choose to play with or without teammates. Now that's kind of cool. That's not just something with ghost mode. That is something that's universal. Me, ghost mode, I choose not to die. <laughs> I choose to have my squad with me. Along with the other immersive things that they've added, they've added, uh, again, something else we suggested in our immersive ideas videos. I can't help but think that Ubisoft was listening, so thank you so much, guys. Another thing is this bit of realism right here, where you can see on the bottom left-hand corner of my screen, I have a 30-round magazine. If I fire off seven rounds in the normal game and then re reload it, it's it's just it's just going to replenish those seven rounds. But here, like in real life, if I drop that mag, I drop that mag, and I just screwed myself out of 23 rounds. So, and a lot of games do this, and I'm actually surprised Ghost Recon didn't do it initially. I think it's something that should be in the game. Well, now it is. If you play Ghost Mode, if I fire one round and reload, bam, there went 29 rounds. They're now lost. So, you know, getting more ammo capacity is something that you want to keep your eyes on. Something else that you may or may not notice in ghost mode. This is actually something you may not know. And yes, I am going to get to the permadeath thing. Trust me, there's a lot I want to talk about there. That's why I'm holding off on that one. Another point is resources. Whenever you collect resources in ghost mode, you get 50% more than other modes. It seems to be something to kind of help you out. Notice right there, I just got 75, whereas in the normal game, I would have gotten 50. Now, this also goes for convoys. If you take a 5,000 convoy, like say in Kiwani or here in Libertad, where I'm at right now, instead of the 5,000, I'll get 7,250. See, it says, if I hover over it, it says plus 5,000, but if I go collect that, I'll actually get 7,250. It gives you plus 50% on all your resource gathering. That's kind of cool. I figure it's something to kind of help you out along your way out on ghost mode. Speaking of that, it also gives the ability to travel anywhere, even places you haven't been. Like over here in the cruise, you can see I've not been here yet. But if I want to, as you can see right here, I can hold X 
and fast travel to a place I've never been. It's a handy little tool. It's just another thing they've given us to kind of help us progress more quickly in ghost mode. And things do go much faster when you can just fast travel around. However, that's just Rebel Outposts. If you want to travel to a town, you do have to have been there first. Now, as you can see here, this just reminded me as I arrived here, all your DLC that you had in uh, that you've had in the game is still available in ghost mode. When I go to vehicle drop off, I still have the ridiculous list of about 40 to 50 vehicles right here. You still have access to all your DLC and everything you earn here likewise carries over like this fancy armor I'm wearing. We'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Let's get some of the, uh, actually, let's hold off on this. Let's talk about the bad parts. Let's talk about the bad stuff. Then we'll go back to more good news about ghost mode. One thing that's very immersive is that if you die, you die. When you die in ghost mode, it's permanent. Now, that's not, that doesn't mean if I go down, like I can go down and my teammates will revive me. But if you get a game over screen, then it's game over. And you do have to reroll all over from scratch. We'll talk about some of those aspects here in a second now. That does not mean a game over from mission failure. You can fail a mission by being detected or whatever, and you'll you'll still be good. It's just if you die. I cannot confirm if that goes along, you know, if that includes killing rebels. Kill enough rebels, you're going to get a warning on your screen that says if you kill any more, you'll receive a game over. I hate doing that, but that was just for demonstration. I actually cannot confirm that that will actually cause your character to be deleted. Maybe someone can confirm that for me. I'm not about to test that after, oh, probably 40 hours in this character already. I'm not about to risk trying that. Now, so let's talk more about the permadeath kind of thing. This does go with the exoskeleton, which I'll talk about here in a minute. You see I've unlocked bits of exoskeleton. This does carry over to the main campaign, and even if you die... You will keep all of that. Let's just get that out of the way right now. Now let's talk about some other aspects of death. There's a lot of aspects of death I want to talk about because permadeath is something which makes me a bit nervous. One reason that permadeath makes me nervous is this game definitely is not without its bugs. Okay, we all know. Now, Ubisoft has been going through and fixing these bugs systematically. A lot of ones that used to happen don't happen anymore. It's getting better. But every time a new patch comes out, as with any game, so too do new bugs. And some people have reported dying due to some bugs having to do with parachutes and aircraft, for instance. Now, that's one thing I want to talk about. In ghost mode, I would recommend you simply avoid all aircraft, unless you have to, and all motorcycles. The reasons being, it's too easy to take a header off a cliff in a motorcycle and die. And trust me, I've had many people just scroll through the comments in these videos, in this series. I've had, I've had many reports of people who took a header off a cliff, died with a motorcycle, and because of that lost 20, 30, or even more hours of gameplay because they crashed in such a place, in such a way, that their teammates could not revive them. Or maybe they were playing alone. Helicopters, it's kind of the same thing, except it has to do with the anti-air defense systems. Um, that's, the, that's the kind of dice you really don't want to roll. Do I really want to fly this chopper and save a little time going from point to point? risking getting those missiles shot after me sure you can fly low and try to avoid them but what happens when your parachute glitches or you crash into the ground on accident or you just fail to dodge a missile entirely i say and many people will agree with me on this avoid aircraft and motorcycles everyone who plays ghost mode is probably in agreement motorcycles are a great way to get around but it's so easy to trip over a rock fall down a cliff and not be able to be revived by your teammates there's still a few more things I want to talk about death. I want to keep this video short, but there's still a few more things. If you are about to do a mission that you're nervous about dying on, for instance, let's have a look at some of the missions I have done here. I talked in the previous video about the order in which I did the missions, where I do the harder missions where I think death might be possible first. And once I get those out of the way, I move on to the easier stuff. So what I'm saying is, if you are afraid of dying on a mission, go hop on your main character in regular mode. Get, get on your level 30 or your, or your tier 1 character or whatever. Get on your regular character. Do some dry runs on the mission. Find out how to do it. Then go back to ghost mode, and now you know how to do it. There are some missions. I mean, we've all done... By now, most of us have played through the game. And there's some missions that each of us know that there is a chance of failure. Go practice it. Or watch my upcoming video guides, which will show you how to get through the missions with as much ease as possible, specifically made, you know, for ghost mode. 
Okay, so is there anything to talk about dying? Yeah, there is a there is one more note about dying I want to make here. Again, remember that character creation screen I showed you? If you die, it takes you back there, and you have three blank slots. You know, so it's like, well, there you go. Let's start all over again. You start all over again at a Mario. Some viewers have suggested to me, and I want to put forth, first of all, I do not endorse this, have not tested this, and will not test this, because I never endorse cheating or exploiting. People have suggested to me multiple ways to possibly avoid permadeath. I would not try any of these. I'm actually pretty sure most of these aren't going to work. One idea is, this has been suggested to me by a couple different viewers, it, what if you back up your saves? Back up your saves to an external device, that way if you die, just reload your saves. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure that's easier to do on PC than on console. I'm on PS4, but you could technically do that on PS4, but I I haven't tested it. I won't test it. So don't ask me to. Well, go ahead and ask me to, but I still won't. I, I think uh, Ubisoft actually um, saw that one coming, and that's why every time you start up the game now, it says installing game content, and when you click on ghost mode, it like does a quick download of files or does a quick thing. I think it actually might save your ghost mode save separately from everything else just to pre prevent people from doing that. I cannot confirm or deny that. Another idea which has been suggested... Um, and I, you know, I, I classify this stuff with scum saving. It's the same kind of thing I don't do in other games. I'm just saying I don't endorse it. If you do it, it's fine. But one possible idea is if your team is down and you go down, as that's what happened to me in my, I've had one death in ghost mode and that's what happened. My entire team was down. When I went down, I had no one to save me. So I had to just, I had to just sit there and watch my time tick out and die. It's possibly possible you could just quickly close the app or if you're a computer, you know, just hit alt F4 real quick. Um... And just have to redo that one mission. But I wouldn't recommend that either. I've, because that goes another thing I want to talk about ghost mode here. Just mention real quickly. A lot of people have mentioned a lot of bugs. People have, A lot of people have lost, lost their characters entirely to glitches. Uh, the game freezing and other things. Now, I haven't yet. I've actually had the game freeze. I had a blue screen on a, during right during a mission. My, my game blue screened on me. I came back and it put me right at the end of the mission. Right where I should be. But I have had a lot of people... Um, report missing their character entirely, losing everything they got. That said, if you're about to die, what do you have to lose, right? So there is that. Consider it that way. If you're about to die, you're going to lose your character anyway. When you're playing Ghost Mode, you have a new screen in your in your little tack map pause menu here, which will replace the challenge uh, screen with this. Now, note that this is what this is doing is this is showing you the total of everyone you've taken down. This is not this playthrough. If you want to see what you've taken down this playthrough on this character, you look on this screen. What this screen is for is to show you, notice how each, with the new prestige points thing, each boss you drop gives you 400 prestige points. It's pretty much all this is doing. And it's showing you, you know, your unlocks. Like you can see here, I have, it went under dismantle production, um, the only piece of exoskeleton I have left is the back piece. It shows they've already unlocked that. We'll talk about exoskeleton here in a second because that's part of the fun stuff and that's one main reason I'm playing ghost mode. All this screen shows you is that I've killed these guys at one point or another, earned their prestige points. I can't get them again. If I were to die right now, I'd have to restart from scratch from Amaru and Itakwa. Complete restart. But this screen would look the same. Because once you unlock the exoskeleton pieces, they are permanent. You have unlocked them. And also, once you earn the 400 prestige points from each of these guys. Um, also, I should mention that top one there, uh, reaching level 30, that's 3,000 uh, prestige points as just like reaching tier 1. This stuff, you know, all permanent. So if I, if I make a new character, I beat everyone on the left-hand side of the menu over there. I'm not getting any prestige points. Reaching level 30 won't get me any prestige points. I've already hit that once. You only get that one time. Because prestige points are, you know, they don't apply to just your character. They apply to basically everything because they let you open crates. Let's have a look at the exoskeleton. By 100% dismantling each wing of El Sueño's operation, you get new pieces. For instance, security gives you the boots, which you can hardly even see down there. And then influence gives you the chest piece. Smuggling gives you the legs. Production gives you the back. El Sueño gives you the headpiece. I do have multiple strategies on how to, you know, most efficiently work your way through this map here. I mentioned in the last video, I'll have a shorter video going through that um, in the future of this series. I'll have a, a quick little video just showing what is the best strategy to make it through here and get those pieces if that's what you're after. Now, speaking of the exoskeleton pieces, another thing I want to mention is difficulty you're playing on. I'm playing on arcade. I'm playing with full HUD. 
and my team. I could turn off my team. I could put it on extreme and, you know, et cetera, and I could die a lot, but that's not fun for me, especially since I have to make these videos to show you guys. I have to figure out how to do this stuff and I have a certain obligation to make videos, get content out there for you guys. I don't play it on arcade. There's no shame in playing on arcade mode. I just want to get the darn exosuit. Once I get this exosuit, as you see, if I go over here, let's go over here. I can turn on tier one because I'm level 30. I can go ahead and activate tier mode. First, I want to make sure I get this exosuit. Then oh, I'll be a little more carefree about my play style here because I'll have gotten basically everything I want out of ghost mode. One thing that ghost mode gives you is, you know, to sum this up, one great thing ghost mode gives you is immersion. Lots of immersion through just deciding when to reload your weapon if to reload because if you drop a magazine you're potentially wasting bullets it gives you immersion through permanent death it gives you immersion through only you know really having to make your weapon choices carefully you may make every decision that you make you have to make carefully right now my goal is to get the exoskeleton suit of armor and i'm fine with leaving my team on putting it on arcade mode and just blazing through to get that done i've already beaten this game multiple times it's fine have fun in whatever way you want to once i get the stuff i want out of ghost mode i'm looking forward to the challenge the challenge of doing simple missions in Ataqua, knowing that if i die i'll have to start over and do it again or in some cases working through tier mode tier mode is going to force your difficulty down i will inevitably embark on tier mode i'm going to try and see if i can get the gold exoskeleton there's three levels there's the brown one you get at first it's kind of brown and silver once you hit level 30 you get the one i have which is silver and blue and then once you hit tier one, you get the gold one. Of course, I'm going to try that. And I'll probably die at some point in tier mode trying. And I'll lose all of this progress. But we'll see what happens. First, I want to get my exoskeleton, get this gear, get some more content to test out for you guys. And then we'll see what happens. All right, guys, that's about it for my intro into ghost mode. Everything you need to know. Some of the questions you may have had. Some things you may or may not have known. There's a lot of perks like being able to fast travel anywhere. You know, well, you know uh to rebel rebel hideouts anyway to the rebel rally points you can check you can travel to any of those getting 50 percent extra resources that's a nice little perk there's a lot of cool immersive things here i really like only being able to change my loadout at the ammo boxes it it makes for decision making and everything being so critical on you surviving really uh helps helps me figure out and i learn my weapons better i've learned my weapons better in this mode than i have testing as i've said before i now know more about the ak-12 than i ever knew from testing it all right, guys, thank you so much for watching. There's much more to come in this series. There's going to be individual videos on, you know, strategies for assigning skill points and what order, which skills are most, most important. There's going to be mission strategies. There's going to be loadout strategies. Everything to come on Ghost Mode because this is so much fun. And I know a lot of you guys are having fun with Ghost Mode too. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure. I'm Dark Dally. I will catch you all next time.